This demo is going to show how to create a derived mosaic data set. In this case, I have a number of directories which contain collections of images. So the U directory contains various images from various different dates. Similar in the V directory under Dale, there are other images. Um, you can see here's a TIFF file. Um, each of these different images has different projections, different pixel sizes. Um, and we also have a derived mos um, a source mosaic data set that I created in a previous demo. So the first thing we're going to do is to create our uh, mosaic data set. So go to here and create new mosaic data set. I'm just going to call this um, NC1, natural color 1, and I'm actually going to define the coordinate system as being Web Mercator Auxiliary Sphere, as that will definitely encompass all the data sets that I intend to add. So we run that. It only takes a couple of seconds. The mosaic data set is added. And if we go back uh, to catalog, uh, we can now go um, add rasters and start selecting the data sources. Now these were the data sources were different folders, so I'm just going to go to folder and specify the various folders uh, that I wanted. So it was under uh, F, there was um, under this folder, there was actually one image under imagery P. I'm just going to add that one. Um, let's also add another folder under optimized under U. And we had all these different directories. So let's go back and just select the whole of U. Let's add that. And then if we also go under V. Uh, we had these all these directories, so let's go and add those and run. This is now going to add all these um, raster data sets. And now these are all in different projections, different pixel sizes. It's going through the directories, finding all those, and um, adding those to the, to the mosaic data set. So now if we open the mosaic data set attribute table, we'll see all these different data sets have been added. Uh, if we go to any one of them, let's pick this one and zoom to, you'll see that the, the image the images have been has been added. I also wanted to add um, the source mosaic data set, so I'm going to go um, back to my catalog, find my mosaic data set, and go add rasters. In this particular case, um, I'm actually going to say that it's a data set and go and find that mosaic data set that I had, the source mosaic data set that I had created before. Uh, this is the one called A1. I'm going to add that. So this is actually, so what we're actually doing is adding a mosaic data set to another mosaic data set. Um, one has to be a little bit careful of doing this. Um, it's not always um, optimum to do, uh, but it will work in many cases very well. Uh, the other way to do it is to use the table raster um, type, and that will actually add the individual rasters within the mosaic data set or from the source mosaic data set um, to my derived mosaic data set. In this case, I only want to see it as one single mosaic data set. So uh, in other words, the source mosaic data set will be added as a single record into uh, my derived mosaic data set. So add that one. That will also quickly add that. And we should see that this one has been added at the bottom here. Um, so here's my A1. If I now zoom to that, you'll see that that data set is now in this particular area as well. So we've actually added all these mosaic data sets to the, to the raster. To, sorry, all the rasters to the mosaic data set. And now there are a couple more things that we need to do. One is you will see that there are not, not much metadata in it. Um, these are all single um, 
raster data sets and there was no real metadata defined in them. Uh, so one of the things we need to do is to add some. So I'm just actually going to add a field. Um, and the field in this case is going to be acquisition date. And we're going to define this as being um, a date field. So let's do that, save that. And if we have a look at this, the footprint now has acquisition date. Let's drag this to the front so we can see it a bit easier. And what you'll actually see is that all the different images actually have dates, but the dates are actually part of the name. And now, unfortunately, in this particular case, different naming conventions have been used, so there's no easy way of calculating it. So what I'm actually going to do is to go and actually um, edit each one of these dates and actually define it. Um, I'll actually go through this, and we'll skip this in the part of the demo. So one second. So now I have added the acquisition date for each of the individual records. So what we now need to do is to save that, make sure I save my edits. And you will actually notice that the imagery has various pixel sizes. So as my mosaic data set is in Web Makeda, these are all now in meters. And you will see that the low pixel size ranges from um, literally uh, 15 centimeter data all the way up to uh, 2 meter data. So let's actually go and change some of the additional properties of the Mosaic data set. I'm actually going to go and go to Properties, go to Defaults, and set a couple of these parameters that we need, we need to change. Um, let's actually look at one of them. Uh, the first one here is the actual comp um, default compression method. I'm actually going to change this to JPEG. This means that by default, when it transmits the data across the network, it's going to actually take the data and compress it using JPEG compression with a quality of 75. Uh, that will speed up um, the access to the imagery over low bandwidth connections. Um, various other parameters. One of the I want to change is the cell t size tolerance um, because we have these very ranging um, pixel sizes over the same area. Um, I'm actually going to put that um, to about 10. Um, and a couple of other parameters I actually want to change is I want to actually change it to always clip to its footprint. Uh, and in this case, the data cannot contain um, no data. So I'm going to turn that off, uh, leave it clipping to, to the, the boundary. Um, that's fine. Uh, so the rest of the parameters are OK. Although it has time, I'm actually not going to use a time field because uh, the time slider doesn't work particularly well uh, with this type of data. Um, we can also change this is the max request size. I'm going to change it to 15,000 by 15,000. Uh, that makes it easy for people to export larger extents of the, of, of the imagery. OK, that's that. A couple of other parameters that you need to actually um, change. Uh, one is um, the min pixel size. I'm actually going to set this to 0 uh, because we actually want to see all the images at all scales. So um, the min pixel size, set that to 0. Um, that's all been set. And then also the max pixel size is really the scale, it represents the scale at which when you zoom out, you still want to see the images. Uh, they vary because it's due to the varying low pixel size values. I actually want to set this to a constant value, um, which is suitable. Um, I'm going to actually take about a, a value of, let's say, 200. That should be fine. Max pixel size, 200. That means one pixel on the screen, if it represents a size that is um, smaller than 200 meters, then it's going to actually be displayed. The image is going to be displayed. So that's now been set. So let's we can, um, close that. Um, and now, as we pan and zoom around, we can see that in this particular case there are two overlapping images. 
if we go to some of the other data sets, um, let's go to some of these, these other ones in Dale, you can see that um, we're still we're seeing these images again. There we have overlapping images. Uh, what you'll notice about these images is, is they actually have um, borders around them, um, which we might want to clean up. There are various ways to clean to clean this up. Um, the simplest one is to actually just use the build footprints tool, and that will try and clean everything up. So that's what I'm going to do in this particular case. Um, going to go to the catalog, pick my mosaic data set, go optimize, nope, I'm going to go modify, uh, build footprints, and I'm actually going to say do it by radiometry. There are various ways of cleaning up the footprints. By radiometry is one way. I'm going to set the, basically there are some data sets which are have black borders, some data sets have white borders, so I'm going to set the tolerance uh, for, the, for a little bit lower here, so I'm going to say 253 for example, approximate number of vertices, uh, I don't think we need it's, um, 80 vertices, I think most of these shapes can be represented by let's say uh, 20 vertices, um, so I'm just going to shrink the distance by basically 100. Simplification method none, um, let's run that. So this is actually going to quickly go through these data sets and for every single data set to try and compute better boundaries. This shouldn't take long. So that process completed. Uh, we can see that uh, the whole process only took um, about 15 seconds to, to run. So now we zoom to different data sets. Let's go to this one over here. Um, also, these data sets have all been, been appropriately clipped. There are no unnecessary, um, um, no data areas. Alternatively to actually automatically doing it, what we could actually have done is to um, manually edit the footprints using the editing tools uh, as I showed in a previous demo. So that's how you create um, um, a derived mosaic data set. Um, now this can be published and directly used in all your applications. Thank you.